the praying mantis, quite possibly the strangest looking insect on the planet. Normally, we think of the classic stick-like specters that sit on tops of bushes waiting for prey, but what if I told you that a strange bark-dwelling species native to Central America was lurking in the tropical forests of South Florida? Today, I'm heading to investigate. I'm Spencer Hoffman, and for years I've been fascinated by the strange camouflaged insects that sometimes turn up in our yards, especially the praying mantises. Recently, while exploring South Florida's scrub habitats, I got up close and personal with a rarely seen grizzled mantis, one of the strangest and most camouflaged of North American mantises. However, in my time in the wildest state in the country, I heard rumors of another mantis, an invasive species that has been spotted in pockets of forest in the region. While Florida has proven to be quite the unforgiving place to film wildlife documentaries, I've already tracked down many targets I never thought I'd get to see, and if I can get my hands on this mantis species, there's a good chance I don't need to test my luck in Florida again for quite some time. Turns out, my good friend Emilio Pasmino has seen these mantises in person over the years, so I'll be joining up with him once again on the search for another unusual species. So this is a park I go often. However, I normally am not targeting invertebrates. I go for other animals like yellow rat snakes and soft shells. But I remember that years ago, without even knowing what it was, I saw one of these lichen mantises on a tree just like these. And I picked it up. And of course, not knowing what it was, I kind of just looked at it and put it back. But now that Spencer has come to Florida to look for these animals, I thought, wait, is that not the one that I saw in this park? So that's why we're here today, to find these mantises. The Mayan lichen mantis is in a family of insects known as bark mantises. Their arboreal nature means they've evolved to match the tree bark in their habitats, and while not native, this insect is right at home in mixed tropical forests just like this one. With the mosses and odd plants growing on the trees here, spotting one of these camouflaged mantises is going to be quite the challenge. But Emilio is my secret weapon. He knows this park like the back of his hand, and there aren't many creatures that can evade him that easily. We tracked down an elusive Caribbean giant centipede not that long ago, and I'm confident that enlisting his help again will lead to a successful catch. That is, unless he wanders off again. He has this tendency to like disappear, but when he does, he comes back with really crazy stuff. So I know he went this way. Watch him have like an alligator or something. Highly illegal. There he is. You got something? Yep. What do you have? Gave me quite a chase, but look at this guy. Oh, a regal. Not what gardener. I expected. <laughs> Not what I expected. Yeah. I thought you were gonna have like an alligator or something. <laughs> I wish. So I've seen these guys get huge. I'm pretty sure they're the largest species of dragonfly we're gonna have in this area, right? Probably. But they are really fast animals. In fact, they are the fastest flying insects. They have some of the like craziest maneuvering abilities. Uh, most insects can only really fly in one direction or like up. These guys can reverse, they can stop and hover. Uh, and the reason they're able to do that is they have four wings that can all beat completely separately. Most insects, they'll have uh, muscles that attach to the thorax and just pump the wings as one group. These guys can actually move their wings independently, which give them a lot of maneuverability in the air. And the reason they're so fast is because they're voracious predators. They're going to be hunting any flying insect that they can get their well, limbs on. Yep. And to help them hunt, they have these massive eyes that have excellent vision. Each little, you can see it really close up on the macro, that they have tiny little eyes inside those giant compound eyes. What they actually function as are almost like pixels on a screen. What will happen is insects are flying around the environment. They'll detect tiny bits of motion, which they can then zip in and grab it in midair. They're extremely precise hunters and can intercept their prey in three dimensions. Seeing these dragonflies flying around is a great sign that lots of insect activity is going on. Lots of little flying insects are out. That's what I'm talking about. You never do know what he's gonna catch. He got distracted by a large butterfly and the chase led us out into an open meadow. While trying to catch up, I saw something interesting flying around in the grass out of the corner of my eye. Landed over here somewhere. Oh my gosh, I am blind. Look at this, look at that. That's not the praying mantis we're looking for, but that is a praying mantis. Well, this is a special little find. This is one of the American grass mantises, and this is as big as they get. This is an adult. Only the adults get wings. Looks like a prairie mantis, which makes sense because we're out here in this mixed grass habitat. 
and you can see why they would prefer a habitat like this. Look at that appearance. Very slender, almost like a little piece of grass. And they're very delicate, so I'm being extremely careful to handle them with caution because very, very delicate insects. I don't wanna hurt them, look how cute he is. Beautiful, beautiful little mantis. With their size, they'll be eating tiny little flying insects. What they'll be doing is they'll be sitting in these little blades of grass, sitting there waiting, watching for little gnats, leaf hoppers, things like that to zip by. And you can see, it looks like a normal praying mantis, just shrunk down in size. Rambush predators using that grass-like appearance as camouflage. Wow, look at you. This is a great sign that if these praying mantises are out, this is a lifer for me, there could be more different species out in here. And since this is the spot where Emilio has seen the lichen mantis, I think, we got, I think this is a good sign that we're on the right track. Our first mantis, a very strange species too. Insect predators are out in full force, which means insect activity is at a high. If the lichen mantises are here, then they should be out as well. Their arboreal lifestyle will prove to be a challenge though, because deeper in the forest, the trees are massive. Well, we've seen some uh, interesting habitats so far on the trip, but uh, of all of them, this one actually looks a lot like Central America. Uh, look, at the, look at this tree right here, the vines and stuff growing on this thing. This is insane. Look at that. If there was ever a place to find an introduced species of tropical mantis, it would absolutely be here. What is that animal eating? Oh, it's eating its shed. Well, yeah, we saw it with Mikey once. Weird. To get to the mantises, we're gonna have to go up. And this lookout gives us the perfect access point. We walked to the top of the tower, and sure enough, there it was. And just like that, right there. Sure enough, that is a Mayan lichen mantis. Look at you, buddy. Let's see if I can get them to come down. They're, they could be really quick, so I gotta be careful. We actually, we, we saw it. We had to set all our stuff over there, like, really quietly to not set it off. I need, I need to have a jar on standby in case it disappears on me. All right. All right. No, 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 not that way. Come on. There you go. Look at that. It's not an adult. It's probably a late instar nymph. They don't get very big. We've seen the grizzled mantis before. They get considerably bigger than this. Uh, my guess is the grizzled is probably not in this area. Given that these are tiny, the grizzled mantis would be eating them. So they're not like a horribly invasive type of species that's gonna be causing massive ecological damage. They've been showing up in little pockets in little bitty parks here in South Florida. And we had a lead that they'd been seen here at this park. We figured we'd come over here, take a look around, and see if we could see anything. I absolutely love the patterning on these insects. Especially this species, they're so weird with that little green and tan modeling. They look like nothing else. It's unmistakably the Mayan lichen mantis. Praying mantises in general are some of my favorite insects due to their camouflage and their absolutely alien looking appearance. Look at those eyes, those huge, huge eyes give them nearly 360 degrees of vision and their vision's pretty good too. They're ambush hunters. They wait for all kinds of little prey items to zip by. They then lash out with those raptorial front claws, grab them, and tear them apart alive. They're really, really gnarly predators. These guys, specifically, are actually eating small arboreal insects that are climbing the bark, which is why they use that really cool strategy where they'll sit there, compacted tightly against the bark, with their head pointed down. Those insects climb up, and before they can react, this mantis snatches them right up. Absolutely insane. They have basically the same strategy as the bark mantis. Now, of course, that doesn't work too well on a painted wooden structure like this. Is that this mantis stuck right out. But, you know, as smart as these insects are, they don't always know that they're on a surface they don't camouflage on. I often find praying mantises the easiest when they're sitting on the walls of a building or something, because these guys will actually get drawn into lights after dark, which, of course, they're using to hunt the insects that go to the lights. This guy was probably hunting the little flies that have been zipping around here, because we've seen lots of little bits of mammal poop climbing this structure. But a lot of these man-made structures tend to have lots of insect activity. It's wood. Wasps and lots of other things like to nest in wood. So there's a good buffet of different insect species that this praying mantis 
could be hunting. Absolutely gorgeous little guy. Shame you're invasive, but uh, I don't have good enclosures for them because they need a lot of humidity and stuff. So I won't be keeping this individual. They aren't causing a super huge ecological problem. So releasing it back into the wild will not cause any damage to the local ecosystem. Such an alien looking creature and another major target crossed off for South Florida. After the red widow bite, it's as if the state of Florida is sending me signals. It would rather not have me here. So I'm pressing my luck the longer I stay. However, there is one last target, a final creature that would spell 100% completion for the state of Florida. A creature shrouded in mystery whose biological secrets we are still unlocking. A spider with a potentially deadly secret and family ties to the infamous Brazilian wandering spiders. My final mission in Florida ends with the Florida wandering spider, and Emilio is going to help me get it. Stay tuned for that, but if you want to see another amazing camouflaged insect, check out this video, where I came across an incredible stick insect. Hope to see you there, but until next time, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.